Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to look at a couple of items that are going to help you enhance the um, process within your classroom as far as studying, pre-assessment, post-assessment, avenues for your students as a whole to practice content at home. Um, these interactives, we're going to look at three ones today. We're going to look at Quizlet, uh, Quizzes, and Kahoot. Uh, so first of all, we're going to start with Quizlet. Now, what you see here is my dashboard after I've logged in. Uh, first and foremost, for the three items, you're going to want to create an account. All three are free, and all three each serve their own uh, specific purpose in the classroom as well as studying outside of the classroom and will really enhance and save you a lot of time. So first and foremost, looking at Quizlet, this is my dashboard after I've logged in. <clears throat> a couple of things with this, as you can see, you can create entire classes, uh, in which case I have done this. Uh, you can see I have my PHE class in here uh, to try to organize the collections of terms and vocabulary that I can um, distribute to my students for, for uh, comprehension as well as practicing the material outside of the classroom. There are some in-class applications. We'll get to those here momentarily. First and foremost, uh, there are a couple of ways you can approach creating a Quizlet. Uh, first of all, uh, you can create your own. Now you just go right on up to the top, hit create. Uh, from this, venue, uh, this view here, you can go ahead and give it a title. We'll just issue a uh, number two uh, for the sake of the example here. Um, and that being said, you go right on down. Uh, this is almost like a voc. This is really a vocab set. Um, and, and you can make this as grand or as vague as you'd like. So I'll show you some examples of that later. Um, from this view, you can enter your term, place your definition. You can change the languages if you're teaching foreign language, uh, which can be a, a great resource for your students. You can also add voice recordings. You can add images. Um, and do note the image features only if you have the paid account. For the sake of this assignment, as well as the bulk of what you would need Quizlet for, continue with the free account. Uh, so you can add as many cards as you would like. Um, I, I have Quizlet sets that encompass an entire AP curriculum that are you know, in the 700 plus range. Uh, I have simple ones that are by chapter for my American history students that are 15 to 20. Uh, so essentially, you can do a lot with this um, as far as giving resources to, to your students. Once you're done, uh, you have to determine the language you want here uh, for the bulk of which I, I would think the vast majority of all of us will be using English. Um, so for the sake of these, we'll do number one, number one, excuse me, um, number two, number two. Okay, now that we have what we want in there, this is the item we just created. From here, uh, for the sake of our assignment, if you go the route of Quizlet, you're going to go ahead and copy that link, and then you'll paste that to the assignment. There are some other options you have here. If you're in a Google school or use Google Classroom, you can share it directly to it. If you're using Remind as a communication measure, either for your students or your parents, um, uh, the, the parent guardians of the students, you can send that directly to them at that point. You can also, from this view, add this to any class that you might want to. The, again, these are my pre-created ones. Um, so let's say I'm going to go ahead and just put that in the random class and I feel great about this, close it out. And that's the first option for creating a Quizlet. Let's head back to the dashboard. Uh, another way you can do this um, is by simply searching what's already out there. So uh, a lot of you are elementary educators. So let's choose something that you might see or might be teaching at that level. Let's go ahead and see what's out there for teaching the alphabet. Right here, uh, we have one from a teacher from somewhere in the world um, that has already given the letter, a word, and an image so students can begin to practice their uh, comprehension with learning the alphabet. Um, so I really like what I see here, and I feel like this could be something I would use in my class. If I like something that already exists, what I want to do is go ahead and copy that, and it'll take me to that editing window. Now from this view, one thing I always like to do for my sets to keep everything organized is add my uh, name right up front. So we have Mr. George Alphabet. From there, we're gonna go ahead and create that. Same process as last time. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my random class. Go ahead and make sure that it flashes yellow. I can close that at this point, and I've created a Quizlet set based on something that's already out there. Now, you can definitely see which one of these is way more labor intensive than the others. Much like in anything in education, don't reinvent the wheel. It's out there for you to be successful, okay? 
Uh, this is not, you know, academic dishonesty here. This is using the resources that already exist. Um, so there, there's that situation there. Now, from this view, you can see you have a lot of options for your students to study. You can go in the flashcard view and they can go ahead and actually just see a, uh, the apple, the word apple, flip it. Oh, that's the letter A. From down there, you'll see the little sign down there. It'll take you to the next card, B, bug, flip. Yep, letter B. And you have a progress bar to see how far uh, you've gone in the process. That's the flashcard feature. The next item that I, I use a lot in the classroom uh, is Quizlet Live. Now, the beauty of Quizlet Live is uh, this allows for an interactive gaming experience in the class. You do have to have at least four students. I've never had that issue because I do this within uh, like a bell ringer type format. Um, how this works is they'll take that entire list of vocab and the students, it'll all be randomized, will have to get 12 correct to so-and-so win the round. Uh, this gets really competitive. There are two ways I game with this. You can either allow the students to get out of their desk, take the electronic device and all you know, sit together and complete the game, or you can have them do the silent version, which will more accurately assess the individual knowledge of the students in the room. Um, I like to use that for my AP students. It's way more effective as far as me seeing what you all actually know versus seeing that one student potentially in a group has mastered everything and the others are just kind of, you know, hanging out with the group. So that's Quizlet Live, a uh, great feature. I highly swear by Quizlet. Um, I, use it, I use it daily in my classroom and I know my students use it all the time um, to help them study, okay? Quizlet, great program. Um, and again, there are thousands of things out there. So we can just go up here and search music, see what we have. Um, yeah, you, you can be learning the various uh, notations within music. Um, students are able to practice that if it's, if it's at a more elementary level or they're just beginning in band, whenever that might be. Um, they can practice this uh, and be successful. That way they can read the uh, music, the sheet music as they're going. So Quizlet, a lot of great things, highly recommend. The next item we're going to take a look at is Kahoot. Um, and once again, all these views that you're seeing, I've already logged in with my educator account. Um, you will want to create an account, a free one, and you'll have the same uh, program here. So that being said, here is my dashboard. Um, we can go ahead and go and explore my Kahoots. These are the ones that I, I already have in existence. Some of them I've created myself. Some of them I've duplicated, in which case you can see um, duplicated from. That's how I'll also be able to check in and see what you all are producing. Um, but there are a lot, there are thousands of resources out there, you know, so uh, we go ahead and use them. That being said, much like with Quizlet, you can find a Kahoot for almost anything. Let's just search uh, my favorite holiday for the music, uh, Christmas. All kinds of resources here, okay? Varying by question amount, uh, resources that'll help you know, students learn about Christmas if that's what you're covering. Again, let's go with the alphabet, okay? The nice thing about the alphabet here, we have all kinds of resources. Uh, you could, you know, we'll go with the 17 item one, in which case you will actually be projecting this to the students as far as the sound uh, of, of the letter and they will have to respond. The beauty of Kahoot is um, the responses uh, come in both color and shape form. So if your student is struggling with reading, but they can identify that they know the response is probably red, they could respond in that format. Okay, so we have a lot of resources here. Let's go ahead and see if we can find a good one on American history, uh, a generalized one. Perfect. Let's take a look at American history, the American West. Okay, we have options to see the answers that so we can see as far as what uh, has already created in there. It's marking the correct um, response. You can see the toggled time. There is a 20 second time limit on that, which is something you can shut off um, if you want to give your students a little bit more time in the classroom to to respond to these things. So I really like this one. There are a couple things I can do with this. Okay, first and foremost, I can click the three dots here by the star and I can go ahead and duplicate it make it my own. So we now have the draft version. I'm going to go ahead and continue editing this. I like what I see down there, but I just need to change this because it says duplicate of, much like with my Quizlet sets. So I'm going to go ahead and put Mr. George up front and cross-check everything in here. It looks good. One thing I can also do here is I can toggle it 
to only me and make it a private Kahoot. That way I have to give it in class for them to see it. Or I can leave it a public Kahoot and let them play it. Okay. I can change the header image to anything I want. Let's say I'm going to go ahead and use my Pop Funko for the main image they'll see when they log in. And we'll go this route. Hit OK, go. Everything else checks out. Save. And now I have this view. So if you're going to produce a Kahoot from here, you can click share it and send me that link when you paste that onto your document. Or let's say we're ready to play. Go ahead and click play it. And we're going to get to this menu. This is what you would see if you begin to uh, play a Kahoot in the class. Now, there are, there are options down here that you can shut off or shut on depending on how you want to play. Name generator automatically assigns the students in the room a name if you want to, this whole thing to remain anonymous, or they can enter their own name. I usually allow that, but again, I teach older students. You can shut the podium off. Some students like that on just so they can see that you know they were top three at the end. Um, it's what you want to make it. I always leave randomized order of questions and answers on. That way, every time they play it, it's a different sequencing, so they can't just memorize that question one's A, question two's A, so on and so forth. Uh, enable two-step join. I leave that off. We don't have a whole lot of issues of students going in and out of the classroom, but this will make it so that the student has to be present in the room to join the Kahoot because there's a two-step process there. Display pin, I leave it on. Uh, that way if a student gets kicked out due to whatever reason, it's right up in the top left of the screen. They can just join back. Um, I always leave automatically move through questions off. That way if it's not the results I think should have been coming through, we can immediately reteach a concept in that moment or review why the majority of the class went with the incorrect answer versus the correct answer. So I do recommend leaving uh, automatically move through off. Um, but that being said, there are a lot of options here. You can make this what you'd like it. Uh, team mode, you can click that on if you want it to be a group of students around one device. With team mode, they will get a couple seconds to discuss what they think the answer might be. I know a lot of our math teachers uh, use team mode. Uh, that way they can work through formulas. Um, it doesn't really fit in my curriculum, so I tend to just go with classic. We're a one-to-one -one school, so that's an easy application for us. Um, that's usually what I do there as far as using it in the classroom. So that's Kahoot. Um, we can go ahead, I'm gonna click I'm done here, take me back to my dashboard. You can see where I've created that, it's buried up there. Um, and, and once again, you know, you can find Kahoots for almost anything. They're quick bell ringers, they're exciting. Students love the competition. Um, and I recommend, you know, considering using them from time to time. What we're looking at here is um, archived results. So I can see all of the Kahoots that have ever been played in my class recently. Um, or I can even adjust it, you know, until later on. Uh, but there, there are cool things with this. I can download it directly to have the data. I can save it to my drive to have that data. Or I can go into ghost mode and have my students race themselves from the first time they played it. Um, it's a pretty cool feature, ghost mode, uh, if you students want to see how they're improving. Because uh, it'll give them their previous score, their, their new score, and as well as how fast they've been responding to the questions. Um, if you want speed to be a thing. I know when I do quiz bowl type activities, uh, speed obviously is very important. Accuracy first, but speed is also very important. Uh, so I do, I do use ghost mode in that aspect. Um, so big thing with Kahoot, team-based. Uh, I project it to the entire class. Um, and I, I like to keep those questions, you know, for me, unless it's a chapter review, I like to keep them 20 or less. That way they're a perfect bell ringer, get everyone talking, introduce the concepts of the day. That's Kahoot. Quizzes of the three, if, I, if I'm going with reteaching and engaging, quizzes is my favorite. Now, the reason for that is quizzes is individual. Kahoot is broadband application. Everybody's uh, going through the same question at the same time. Quizzes will randomize by student, by device. Okay, so let's take a look at quizzes. Some cool features about that. Once again, literally anything. See what we got on the alphabet here. Okay, we can go ahead and just, you know, it's letter recognition. Uh, once again, you can find all kinds of great things here. Match the capital letter with its lowercase letter. Uh, a lot of cool things that can be done for quick reviews in class. And the beauty of quizzes is you can also assign them for homework, which I'll show you here momentarily. I really like this alphabet one uh, as far as recognizing capitals and lowercase. I know that's something we're working on with my son right now. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do here.
Now, first and foremost, we can do grand review, see if we like everything in it. Looks pretty good. Let's check our answers. Now I can see the correct answers as they come through, just in case you were unsure of something that might have been in there. Obviously, with the alphabet, we're not. Um, but if you have some more advanced curriculum you're trying to teach, you definitely want to make sure that the original author, uh, in this case, Pinder, uh, is, is using material that's accurate. Okay. From here, we can go ahead and do a couple things. Just like Kahoot, we can duplicate this and it'll create it as our own. Now that duplicated one is going to go back to my dashboard. Instead of reviewing that, because the process for, for editing the duplicate is really similar to Kahoot, let's take a look at the features. Play live on this, just like Kahoot, we can shuffle a lot of things off and on. Uh, now the first two here, I always leave these on. It ensures that every student has a different question with a different sequencing of answers, all while being assessed at the same time. Nice thing about quiz is, if you're a faster responder, you'll complete this however fast or however long it takes you. Like Kahoot, the whole class has to wait before you can advance. So that's one of the other features I like about quizzes. Show quizzes review. At the very end, they can see all of the questions they got right and wrong with correct answers. Um, show answers, that gives them a live feed as they're taking the quizzes. They can see what they got wrong um, as far as yeah, responding incorrectly. Game settings, similar to Kahoot. Uh, the cool thing about quizzes is you can toggle on memes. Um, so if your students like funny images, you know they could be good or bad as far as you got the question wrong or right. You can leave that on. I usually like to leave memes on. Students laugh at them in high school. Uh, kind of alleviates any kind of test anxiety while they're while they're working through our quizzes. Because even if it's a pretest, it exists for some. Um, play music. I usually always have that off when I activate a quizzes in class, simply because you know the beats that the program provides aren't that great um, and tend to get annoying while people are logging in. Select a meme set. You can go default. I created my own. Um, I let students create school appropriate memes based on history. They're all dumped in there. Um, again, that's a, even if you're using memes. Okay, so that's the live version. We're gonna go ahead and proceed. We like our settings. This is what'll happen when you activate a quizzes in class. Um, unlike Kahoot, uh, a live game can have as many people as you want. Okay, I always share the code with my students. You can put it in Google Classroom, Edmodo if you're using that LMS or like Kahoot, send it via reminder right away. Um, with these, they can play on their cell phones, they can play on their Chromebooks, they can play on iPads, you know, whatever device they have, uh, they can use that in the class. Um, so that it just advances the game through. Um, the website that they would go to play is join.quizzes.com. Most of my students have saved that as a preset, like you'll see mine up here at the top under the, the hyperlink bar. Uh, if you want to turn the music off here, say you forgot to on the previous menu, you can just click that right there and it just goes through some data for you. Okay, we're not gonna actually play this game, so let's advance. Now we're back here. Another great feature about quizzes is you can assign these as homework. Now I use these as uh, my social studies Olympiad qualifiers. So if I have a student who is absent, couldn't attend the qualifier match that day, I can send them the data, I can leave it timed, and they can do it at their own convenience. Or I can, I can just straight up say, this is gonna close on the third at you know, 1.45 p.m. They have that amount of time to complete this. Same settings. Uh, if I'm assigning this as homework, I usually shut down all of these down here as far as game settings, they're all off. And I also do shut off the quiz review. They can see what they're getting right and wrong as they're taking it, but I don't want them to be able to see the entire set at the end in case you know I, I want to use this as an actual assessment later. Some people do. So that's assigning it as homework. I love this feature. Um, it, it really has changed the game as far as how assessment can look in the classroom. Now the nice thing about this too is you could you could complete that a homework code as many times as you want. So if you're trying to reach mastery level on some kind of concept, whether it's you know alphabet or kindergarten, first grade, all the way through your AP classes, your senior year, it can be applied um, multiple times over. I have students that'll take a quizzes eight, nine times. Um, I, I always make a quizzes for unit tests. That way they can you know practice the content as often as they like. It's very vocab heavy. Um, and I've always received great feedback from my students. So that being said, uh, you have a lot of report options here. You can see anything that's still going, we'll read as running. Um, 
So for example, this is one that I assigned my students as far as a chapter review. I can see how many times it has been completed, the average accuracy, which always increases as we go through the unit. I can see each student who's constantly working on it, uh, their accuracy, the scores calculated by accuracy and speed. Um, so you can take a look at that data. I can look by question, how they're responding, which is great data uh, as far as if you want to look at, you know, what they're getting right versus the non-example that's drawing them away from the correct answer. You can go into overview mode and I can see by students how they're responding if they're not receiving questions. So for example, the gray line you see there is the quiz actually timed out in class before they got to that because of its randomization here. So you might be asking, how did they miss question or did not do question two, but got question nine, right? It's because it was scrambled and randomized the whole way through. Those are features as far as data reports. Love this about quizzes. I use this for pre-post data as far as uh, concept-based learning um, for, for teacher evaluation uh, and our administration loves it. Okay, as far as creating a quizzes, this is the game changer here. So let's create one. We're gonna go ahead and add an image. I always like to add an image to mine. Uh, let's make this an A-push one. So put our fancy George Washington up there. Um, much like with my other resources, let's go ahead and do this. A-push one, Mr. George A-push one. Default language is English. If I want them to be able to find this by just searching it, leave it public, I always lock mine private and give them a code, okay? So here is our editor view. Let's go ahead and do this. Who was the first president? Let's add some options here. Clicking on down. Washington Taft. Uh, let's put Lincoln in there. And let's go with Teddy Roosevelt. So we have this. This is what they'll see when they're actually taking it. Okay, so they can go with color recognition as far as how to complete this or obviously words. Uh, you, can, you can adjust the font. You can add pictures. Let's go ahead and you, you could add one from your computer. Uh, let's upload one here. We know that's our guy. So that's a pretty big hint there. Hopefully they get it right. Um, I like to add images like maps, maps and charts uh, to help them get the, the evidence-based learning uh, notion going down. You can toggle how much time they have if you're leaving the timer on, you can throw that thing all the way up to 15 minutes if it's a math concept and it's, you, you've provided a formula and, and they need to factor for something, uh, or you could make it as quick as you want. I like to leave it 20, 30 seconds in the default range. Um, it has, uh, has always yielded success for me. Okay, so let's go ahead. We wanna add a new question. We're not sure what that is yet. So let's see what already exists out there. Um, let's go with, the American Revolution. Now, we're searching, and oh my gosh, look at all these pre-created quizzes. Let's see what's in this one. Hmm. We have all of these great questions and answers already. So I'm, if I'm going to teach the American Revolution, we're getting to Washington's presidency. Uh, we got to know about Saratoga. Add that question. If you hit the plus sign, it immediately goes over here into your question queue. Okay, um, Declaration of Independence, we should know that. We should know where the surrender was, um, and it looks pretty good. So we're done in here. We're going to hit close, or we could go back up and you know search something else. Maybe we want to compare and contrast the American and French Revolution. Let's click one of these. All right, we're definitely, sorry about the bell, folks. Uh, we're definitely taking a look at what kind of governments exist. Maybe we want to add that one as far as why we're fighting, and now we're done. We have a blank question, so you want to make sure you delete that. And then I believe we did leave our question one incorrect. So take a look at this. You need to make sure that you have a correct answer. We know it's Washington, so let's flag him green. That being said, you come on over. Everything looks pretty good. We're going to click Finish. You got to fill out some information here. I think a ninth grader through a senior should be able to do this. It's history, subtopics, it's American history, and then tags. Let's go ahead and add my go-to, George history as a whole. And then we're going to click finish and create quiz. 
Now we're back to the editor view. You'll see the lock because this is a private quizzes. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be there. We can see the images that existed, the question we created ourselves, as well as the questions we've added. Uh, and again, I, I really love images and maps, uh, mainly because when, you know, when they take a look at the AP test or the SAT, they're going to have that source-based multiple choice. They need to be used to, to seeing those as examples or non-examples. Uh, you can you know, re-edit some things here. If you're, for the assignment's sake, if you're going this route, you're going to there, click share, get shareable link, copy this, and then place that onto your document when you are working on the assignment itself. Okay, that would allow me to see it. And that allows me to access it. Uh, I do recommend though, when you're doing this assignment, if you're going the route of quizzes, make sure that they're public. So you shouldn't have a lock there. You're probably not gonna have anything overly grand as this is a quick introductory assignment. Um, but that'll allow me to for sure see the, the, the assignment you've, or the uh, project you've created. So there shouldn't be any hiccups with that. Okay, so in, in conclusion here, I love all three of these resources. They're all unique in their own and at the same time, highly useful in the classroom. I swear by quizzes. I provide a Quizlet for everything for my students so that they can go hard studying. Uh, Kahoot's great for in-class in applications. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, either Twitter DM at George History, or you can send me an email. Have a great day, everyone.